the next action President Trump took was to tweet at 2.24 p.m. What happened during the 35 minutes between his last tweet at 1.49 and 2.24, his staff repeatedly came into the room to see him and plead that he make a strong public statement condemning the violence and instructing the mob to leave the Capitol. He did not relent until after 4 o'clock when he went out to go to the Rose Garden to film his now infamous go home message. Pat Cipollone was a top White House lawyer. Here's what he told us about his reaction to seeing the violence and his advice throughout the afternoon. When did you first realize that there was actual violence or threatening? I, I first realized that it may have been on television or it may have been Tony or it may have been Phil, but I, I found out that people were you know, they weren't in the Capitol yet, but they were, you know, and, and then I started watching it and, you know, then I was aware. What specifically did you think needed to be done? I think I was pretty clear there needed to be an immediate and forceful response statement, public statement that people need to leave the Capitol now. My question is exactly that. that it sounds like you, from the very onset of violence at the Capitol, right around 2 o'clock, we're pushing for a strong statement that people should leave the Capitol. Is that right? I was, and others were as well. Pat, you, you said that you expressed your opinion forcefully. Could you tell us exactly how you did that? Yeah, I can't. I'm, I'm don't have. You know, I, I have to. Uh, on the privilege issue, I can't talk about conversations with the president, but I can generically say that I said, you know, people need to be told. There needs to be a public announcement fast that they need to leave the Capitol. And Pat, could you let us know approximately when you said that? Approximately when? Almost immediately after I found out people were getting into the Capitol or approaching the Capitol in a way that was was uh, violent. Do you remember any, any discussion with Mark Meadows with respect to his, his view that the president didn't want to do anything was, was somehow resistant to wanting to say something along the lines that he suggests. Talk and it's not, not just just to be clear, many people suggested it. Um, yeah. Not just me. Many people felt the same way. Um, I'm sure I had conversations with Mark about this during the course of the, the day and expressed my my opinion very forcefully. This needs to be done. So your advice was tell people to leave the Capitol, and it took over two hours when there were subsequent statements made, tweets put forth, that in your view were insufficient. Did you continue, Mr. Cipollone, throughout the period of time up until 417, continue, you and others, to push for a stronger statement? Yes. Were you joined in that effort by Ivanka Trump? Yes. By Eric Hershey? Yes. By Mark Meadow? Yes. White House counsel's office wanted there to be a strong statement out to condemn the rioters. I'm confident in that. I'm confident that Ivanka Trump wanted there to be a strong statement to condemn the rioters. Um, I don't know the private conversation she had with Mr. Trump, but I remember when she came to the office one time with White House counsel's office, when she came to the chief of staff's office with White House counsel's office, she was talking about the speech later that day and trying to get her dad on board with saying something that was more direct than he had wanted to at the time and throughout the afternoon. And I think Mark also wanted to get, I remember him getting Ivanka involved because it's like get Ivanka down here because he thought that would be uh, important. Um, I don't think Jared was there in the morning, but I think he came later. I remember thinking it was important to get him in there too. Uh, and, and of course, Pat Philbin, you know, was expressing the same things. I mean, Pat Philbin, you know, was very, as I said, I, I don't think there was one of these meetings where there might have been, but for the most part, I remember the both of us going down together, going back, getting on phone calls. He was also very clearly expressing this view. Pat Cipollone and Cassidy Hutchinson, an aide to Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, 
also told us about the Hang Mike Pence chants. As you will see, Mr. Cipollone recalled conversations about those chants in the West Wing, but he relied on executive privilege to maintain confidentiality over his and others' direct communications with the president. Although Mr. Cipollone was unwilling to provide more detail, Ms. Hutchison provided more explicit information, filling in those blanks. See that for yourself. It wasn't until Mark hung up the phone, handed it back to me, I went back to my desk. A couple minutes later, him and Pat came back, possibly Eric Hirschman too. I'm pretty sure Eric Hirschman was there. But I'm, I'm confident it was Pat that was there. Um, I remember Pat saying something to the effect of, Mark, we need to do something more. They're literally calling for the vice president to be effing hung. And Mark had responded something to the effect of, you heard him, Pat, he thinks Mike deserves it, he doesn't think they're doing anything wrong. To which Pat said something, this is effing crazy, we need to be doing something more, briefly stepped into Mark's office. Do you remember any discussion at any point during the day about rioters at the Capitol chanting, hang my pets? Yes, I remember. I remember hearing that about that. Yes, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I observed that myself on TV. Yeah. I'm just curious. I understand the, the privilege line you've drawn, but do you remember what you can share with us about the discussion about those chants, the hang my pants chants? I can tell you my view of that. Yeah, please. My view of that that is outrageous, and. For anyone to suggest such a thing as the vice president of the United States, for people in that crowd to be chanting that, I thought it was terrible. I thought it was outrageous and wrong. And I expressed that very clearly. With respect to your conversations with Mr. Meadows, though, did you specifically raise a concern over the vice president with him and, and how did he respond? I believe I raised a concern about the vice president, and I and I again the nature of his response without remember, recalling exactly was he, you know, people were doing all that they could. And and what about the president? Did he indicate whether he thought the president was doing what needed to be done to protect the vice president? Yeah, just sir. Yeah. That that question. For production. Yeah. yeah. I'm being sharp on I see. In addition, Mr. Cipollone testified that it would have been feasible, as commentators on television were suggesting, for President Trump to immediately appear at the podium in the press room to address the nation. Would it have been possible at any moment for the president to walk down to the podium in the briefing room and, and talk to the nation at any time? between when you first gave him that advice at 2 o'clock and 4.17 when the video statement. Would that have been possible? Would it have been possible? Yes. Yes, it would have been possible. We just heard Mr. Cipollone say that President Trump could have gone to the press briefing room to issue a statement at any moment. To give you a sense of just how easy that would have been, let's take a look at a map of the West Wing. As we saw earlier, the president's private dining room is at the bottom of the map. The press briefing room is at the top, highlighted in blue, and the Rose Garden, where the president ultimately filmed his Go Home video, is on the right next to the Oval Office, and that's highlighted in green. Ms. Matthews, how quickly could the president have gotten on camera in the press briefing room to deliver a statement to the nation? So as you outlined, um, it would take probably less than 60 seconds from uh, the Oval Office dining room over to the press briefing room. And for folks that might not know, the briefing room is the room that you see the White House press secretary do briefings from with the podium and the blue backdrop. And uh, there's a camera that is on in there at all times. And so if the president had wanted to make a statement um, and address the American people, he could have been on camera almost instantly. And conversely, the White House press corps has offices that are located directly behind the briefing room. 
And so if he had wanted to make an address from the Oval Office, we could have assembled the White House press corps probably in a matter of minutes to get them into the Oval for him to do an on-camera address. Mm, thank you. Other witnesses have given us their views on that question. For example, General Keith Kellogg told us that some staff were concerned that a live appearance by the president uh, at, at the microphones at that moment could actually make matters worse. He told us he recommended against doing a press conference because during his four years in the Trump administration, quote, there wasn't a single clean press conference we had had. President Trump's advisors knew his state of mind at that moment, and they were worried about what he would say in unscripted comments. 